So today I'm going to talk to all of you about um, AI powered ADIM, or, you know, we already had our product uh, called as ADIM, where we, you know, covered some of the visibility challenges. And I'll talk about that. And now I'm going to focus primarily on the AI ops part of our product. So let's begin. So just to start off, um, you know, I want to highlight the key challenges that IT teams have been facing recently. So one big shift that you would have seen in the past 24 months or so is that work is, of course, no longer just a place. It's an activity now. And then what that does is primarily two things. So if you think about it, you uh, now see that users can work from anywhere, right? You can work from your home one day, the next day you can work from a branched location, and then the third day you can work from a coffee shop. So the user's network and environment keeps changing. And then the second thing you're seeing is uh, because of remote work and this big change is that a lot of companies are heavily relying on SaaS apps in the public cloud or um, you know, they are storing their private apps in public clouds or the private data centers. So you're seeing that, you know, when organizations are heavily relying on SaaS apps, um, what that does is actually causes a blind spot for IT teams. So if you think about it, first of all, IT teams have a blind spot in terms of the application performance, you know, is it working well, is it degraded and so on, because uh, now they have to rely on those SaaS app vendors to provide them with dashboards into visibility uh, of, you know, how these tools are, how these applications are working. And then the second piece here is about users, right? Because the user's environment keeps changing, right? They can work from their home or a coffee shop. So if a particular user is having, let's say, an issue with Zoom and they call the IT team to resolve that issue with Zoom, now the IT team may not be aware of, you know, what does the user's laptop situation look like? Is the CPU okay? Is the memory fine? Uh, maybe now they're connected to a different Wi-Fi, SSID, and so on. Uh, what is their LAN looking like, right? Is there congestion on their LAN and so on? So if you now see that due to this new way of working, this has caused a lot of issues for your IT teams. And so, of course, firstly, I highlighted issues in terms of visibility, where now we have blind spots introduced into your service delivery chain. And now let's talk about the second problem here that let's say even if IT teams have visibility into their application health and performance, and IT teams gain visibility into the user's part of the network, which is their device, Wi-Fi, LAN, ISP, and so on. Even then, if you think about it, IT teams today are ingesting several alerts from these disparate tools. So you will get you know, different alerts that are triggered. One is, can be from the app side, one can be from the ISP side, and so on. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this because uh, this is the very core of AI ops. Uh, but so when you see these disparate tools generating alerts, it can be really confusing for IT teams to resolve all of these alerts and incidents and really analyze the root cause of these alerts. So with that, I want to talk about, you know, what is AI ops? Um, so this is a new term that is coined as AI ops, uh, which is a way to streamline and automate complex IT operations, right? So if you think about it, what we have on our end is large data sets. So users data, right? What I mentioned as, you know, high CPU, high memory on their device, uh, issues on their LAN and so on. Then we have data about the branch locations as well right? How are the branch locations health looking like? How is the performance of the devices and so on? Then the application health. So for this, we are doing a layer seven curl metrics uh, from our users devices to the applications, from our branch location devices to the applications, and also from our Prisma access locations to the applications. So you're seeing we have uh, several different vantage points here by which we are testing the health of these applications. Um, so understanding reachability as well as degradation. Then when you think about the network, right, such as network services, um, looking at your DNS and auth failure, what is the reachability of it and what is the health of it? And finally, we also have data about security policy that is configured uh, in your firewalls and so on. So we have these large data sets that can be streamlined 
uh, to detect anomalies, diagnose and remediate problems. And this is built on a machine learning platform that is continuously improving based on user feedback. So I wanna highlight that three things need to happen to make your AI ops deployment a success, right? Your data needs to be complete, consistent, and correct. And here at Palo Alto Networks, uh, we are taking the onus on us to ensure that we have all of the data sources on our CDL and we're able to pull it from the single data lake, right? So we ensure that your data is complete, consistent, and correct so that you can get the best use of your AI ops deployment. So now I wanna introduce AI powered autonomous digital experience management, which is built on two key pillars. The first pillar is observability and the second pillar is AI ops. So in the observability pillar, we solve the very first problem uh, that IT teams were facing. And we have already launched this part of the pillar, which which was called as ADEM, uh, but we launched this about 18 months or so ago. And we provided visibility into the user's network. We provided visibility into app health, degradation, reachability, then additional visibility into even branch offices. And now what we have added here is the network infrastructure visibility, right? So this is recently added as part of our recent launch where we're now even providing visibility into your DNS and auth servers, uh, reachability and degradation to paint a full picture of our visibility story. And then the next key pillar here is AI ops. So we're using AI ML techniques to solve mainly two problems on a very high level. So the first one is really understanding systemic issues, being able to correlate signals from different parts of the network to proactively notify admins of these systemic issues. So systemic issues are issues that are happening on a larger scale or that are impacting a larger user base, right? So AI ops can help you proactively detect anomalies and provide a root cause, right? And create incidents uh, for systemic issues. Then the other piece that I'm, I wanna highlight is how AI ops also helps in the case of a single user issue where you know, there can be a user who's having some app degradation and it's because of high CPU or memory, right? So these are single user issues that can also be, um, you know, resolved by AI ops because we provide a natural language query interface where help desk teams or IT teams can quickly and simply ask a question to this natural language query interface. They can type out the question and then we'll get a response um, you know, for what the issue was, what the root cause is, and I'm going to show all of this in the demo. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about AI ops since we have already covered the observability part in the previous session. So now coming to what we have in AI ops. So this is our latest and greatest launch where the first thing that I want to highlight is proactive incident management. Right, and if you think about it, um, network anomalies, right? There are issues that happen across your service delivery segment and they don't happen in silos. Often you see a particular pattern associated to it. So today what happens is, let's say there are two, four different incidents that are generated at the same time. Um, so today you would see four different network operators or IT admins that are assigned to these four different incidents. And they are all working on this incident in, in, in silos. And maybe somewhere down the line, they may find out that all of these incidents are actually correlated and it has a single root cause. Now with the use of AI ops, what we're able to do is correlate that for you. So if we see four different incidents are generated at the same time, we are able to do correlations to understand if there is indeed a relation between any of these incidents or not. And if there is a relation, let's say all four of these incidents are related, in that case, we will make it as one incident, highlighting the root cause in the title of the incident itself, but we also provide the symptoms of that issue, which are the other incidents, right? Which come in now the correlated alerts section 
of our new incident framework. Then in our new incident framework, we also share details about impact analysis or blast radius of this issue. How many unique users are potentially impacted due to this issue? And finally, we provide a playbook driven remediation steps to make it easy for admins to resolve this issue. Now let's look at an example of that. So let's say that you have four different incidents that are created at a single time, okay? And one of these incidents is saying data center connectivity tunnel is down. Um, and at the same time, you may have an incident saying excessive auth failures, right? So it's normal to see auth failures at times in your network, but you're seeing a higher level of auth failures today. So that's another incident that is generated. Then you will have a third incident that says BGP routing is down. And finally, you may have a fourth incident that may say that users are not able to reach a particular application that is stored in your data center. Now, if you think about this, the reason why data center connectivity was down in the first place might be, let's say in this example, due to some WAN circuit drops. So now you see clearly that your root cause is actually just that your WAN circuit packet has dropped. Um, and basically, Due to that, you're seeing that data center connectivity is down. And all of the other incidents that are created, such as excessive auth failures, BGP routing down, or you know, unable to access a private application, all of these incidents are, they are symptoms of the root cause issue. Um, so when the admin looks at this incident, they need to focus on resolving the root cause in itself, right? That you're seeing packet drops on your WAN circuit. Um, so everything else would just, be shown in the context of this particular root cause. Now, looking at the blast radius or how many users has this issue impacted, we'll also provide that value. In this case, let's say it's 564 users are impacted. And finally, we have quick remediation playbooks uh, that can help you resolve the issue. So you can, in this case, view the hop dropping packets or call the van circuit provider. Now, the next capability I want to highlight in terms of AIOps is forecasting capacity requirements. So if you think about it, um, you know, what we're able to do is tell you a month in advance if you're able to, if you're going to reach your capacity for your branch sites or your data center sites. Uh, and we're able to forecast that one month ahead of time so that you can take all the actionable steps that you need to take to ensure that your users have access to the data site resources or are able to connect from your branch locations. So this is especially helpful in the case of mergers and acquisitions. You see two companies coming together and what happens is suddenly there's an influx of users who are accessing the resources in the data center, or you may see an influx of users who are connecting from the branch site. And typically in these scenarios, what has to happen is um, you know, IT teams would need to procure some licenses for these users, or in some cases, you may even need to re-architect your network to some degree to ensure that all of these users are taken into account and can um, properly access the resources that they need to access, and, and basically there is no business downtime. So if you don't know ahead of time, you're obviously left scrambling till the very last minute because if you need to procure licenses or re-architect your network, it will take some time. And what AIOps is able to do is tell you 30 days in advance so that you can plan ahead of time instead of scrambling to the very last minute. Now, finally, I want to cover, um, you know, even ways that we can help um, isolate the issue for a single user problem. So far, we covered a case where multiple users may be impacted. And in our scenario, we call that systemic issue. But now let's take an example of a single user issue. Let's say Bob is calling the IT team and sharing that he's unable to access his email due to some reason. So, so let's look at how that would work in, with AIOps. So what the help this admin can do is type it into our natural language query interface. 
right? Can Bob access email and giving some further details, which I will share in the demo, such as, uh, you know, which Prisma access location is Bob connected to? What device is he on? Let's say Bob has two devices, right? Uh, he connects from his MacBook and his iPhone. So which device are we talking about, right? Providing those few details will really help us uh, narrow down the root cause. So what we're able to do on the back end is multi-domain analysis for troubleshooting. So we check Bob's endpoint itself to see is his endpoint health good. Then we check the Prisma access locations to see are the locations okay or the one that Bob is connecting from, do the nodes look fine on Prisma access? Is there some latency introduced? Then we check auth and DNS servers to check if they are working as like properly. Then we try to identify if the routing is optimal. Finally, we check is it a security policy that is blocking Bob from accessing his email. And then lastly, we want to know if the application itself has an issue. Like let's say Bob is accessing Outlook and Outlook itself has some sort of an outage or some degradation. So, what we're able to do then is actually confirm or deny the problem and then provide um, you know, the root cause of this issue and, as well as remediation. So I just want to highlight that our solution is SASE native. And by that, what I mean is we are natively integrated with the Global Protect agent for our mobile users' um, use cases. And we are also natively integrated in our ION devices for our SD-WAN branch use cases. Furthermore, we have um, built native several native integrations right, for fast time to value for our customers, especially with tools that our customers are heavily using. So for instance, some of you may already be aware, we have a native integration with Zoom, uh, Zoom's QSS feed, to provide root cause analysis for any issues that are happening on you know, audio, video, screen share, and we're able to provide exactly why that issue occurred. Let's say it was high CPU issue on a particular device, or for example, you saw some sort of congestion on LAN, or there was an ISP outage and so on, right? And what we've also done now is we have a native integration with ServiceNow. So we have a bi-direction integration, which means that the incidents that are created on your Prisma SASE can automatically generate a ticket on ServiceNow. And let's say you update your ticket on ServiceNow and you change the priority, the op status, assignee, right? Those details can be pulled back to your Prisma SASE dashboard. Of course, if you've given the permissions for it and if you've, you've selected specifically that you want to enable the bi-directional integration. So we have, um, you know, several other native integrations that are in our roadmap, such as MS Teams uh, for our UCAS, right, or WebEx, and um, even PagerDuty for your ITSM tools. So I just want to highlight how, um, you know, AIOps has been successful so far. We have run a successful beta program. So what we've noticed on a high level, right? If you think about the before and after. So before AI ops, you could see something like um, visibility gaps and silo tools. This of course is referring also to uh, the observability pillar. So the observability pillar provides you that added visibility. And then the silo tools part is where you have siloed incident incidents that are generated. Uh, right, And you also see high levels of incident noise and long MTTR. Then previously, you would also see insufficient incident detection and slow root cause isolation and inability to move beyond a reactive posture towards proactive business enablement. Right, And after AI ops and our entire actually AI powered ADM solution, what we've seen is alerts that are being correlated into a single incident that then enables your staff to focus on tens of incidents instead of thousands of events daily. The next part is incidents are automatically enriched with impact cause and fixed for easy and fast troubleshooting. And finally, reduced MTTR and number of downtime incidents reported by employees. So just to quickly summarize, um, what we're able to do with AI powered ADIM is we're able to provide insights and the architecture that today's enterprises really require. 
then we're able to automate and scale IT operations to proactively resolve incidents and reduce business downtime, right? And of course, you can learn more at paloaltonetworks.com slash sassy slash adip. Perfect. So now I'm actually going to move to the demo. All right. So if you look at, um, let's go to the dashboard screen. So this is our new SASE Health dashboard, right? And what you can do on this dashboard is on this page, you're able to view your entire global health of all of the mobile users um, that are in your organization, the ones that are being monitored. Then if you switch gears and come here, you can see the health of your current sites. So in this, we're including um, your SD-WAN branch locations, as well as third-party sites. Of course, we're able to provide more telemetry and details about SD-WAN sites, uh, but we do provide correlation information and forecasting capacity uh, information about third-party sites as well. Then here you have monitored applications. Um, so here you can basically monitor your app SLAs. And if you see here in just one click, you're able to navigate from your mobile user view to you know, global health of your sites and finally even monitor your app SLAs. So let's see what's happening with Zoom in this example. Um, I'm seeing that this is the US West uh, Prisma access location. And here it's clearly telling me that 35% of the time, Zoom app actually responded from this location. So this location seems to be somewhere in Asia. So if you think about it, your US West Prisma access location, users who are connecting to this location, 35% of the time, Zoom is responding from some servers in Asia, right? So this is an app SLA dashboard that can really help you talk to your app providers and um, you know really share information with them on what's going on. Now here, I wanna show that we have 172,000 current mobile users, out of which 171.6 thousand users uh, have a good experience and 400 have a potentially degraded experience. So with just one click of clicking on that 400 value, you're able to see a segment-wise breakdown into where the issue lies. So here you're seeing 100 um, issues are on the device end, 90 users are impacted for because of Wi-Fi, 20 because of LAN, and so on. So now let's look at um, the data center. So if you remember in the slide deck, I shared an example about service connection is down due to WAN circuit drops and so on. So this is that example where you're seeing on the title itself, it's very clearly mentioned that Prisma access service connection area Southwest DC site is down. And then what you're able to see here is a lot of information about the incident operations and impacted objects such as tunnel name, site name, BGP peer name. Now looking right in the center is, you know, I had mentioned you're able to see the blast radius or the potential impact of this incident. And in this case, it is 465 unique impacted users. Now, if I scroll down, I'm able to see that this mark indicates the creation of the incident. And you're seeing that availability looked fine, and it dropped here for a while, but after this particular time, it dropped completely, right? So you see that the availability has gone from green to red. So clearly the, the service connection is down. Um, so scrolling further down, I see on the bandwidth and user count site as well, the actual value has completely dropped um, to zero. So what you're seeing in this light blue shaded uh, areas on the graph, is actually the baselines that we have set up uh, for this incident. So what we're able to do is take data from the past 30 days with seasonality baked in, and we're able to really uh, create these baselines out of that information. Now scrolling further down, you're able to see correlated alerts. So 
um, this is the power of AI ops in terms of correlation is you're able to say that the service connection is down, but you're also able to highlight the other symptoms of the issue, right? Because the service connection is down, you saw all of these alerts, such as your uh, WAN tunnel is down, your BGP uh, is down, you are seeing excessive auth timeout failures across all PA locations, or a particular application is unreachable for all users. So you can see that you're able to see all of this in the context of your service connection site being down, where typically all of these would be raised as separate incidents. What's also interesting is we uh, send a notification to your IT department. If you have set up your email in your notification profile, then we will send this incident via email. Furthermore, we can also send this incident via ServiceNow, right? So if you've set up your integration, um, then you will see that we have uh, set up this ServiceNow incident as well. And finally, you're able to see here uh, remediation playbooks. And these are just quick steps, uh, manual steps for you where you can uh, resolve this issue. Moving forward, we are considering making uh, some of the remediations automated in cases where we can. So now I'm gonna move to the access analyzer piece, which was talking about single user issues, right? Uh, where I shared an example about Bob accessing email. So in this scenario, let's assume that somebody called as Maria Gomez, has an issue accessing her Outlook and she has called the help desk team with this issue. So it will prompt you in some scenarios, uh, but we'll say, can user Maria Gomez access application Outlook from Prisma access location? Again, it's only gonna show me the Prisma access location that Maria connects to. So let's say Maria connects to US East and West. These are the ones it will show me using device because Maria uses two devices, so her MacBook, right? Um, and let me put the query here. So let's say that this is all in the context of her ServiceNow ticket. All right. So you're seeing here, the result is no, which means that no, that Maria actually cannot access Outlook even now at this particular time, right? And you're seeing that we have done a multi-domain analysis or we have done the checks on the back end. So if you look at it, we have checked the endpoint, auth and DNS servers, application health looks fine, right? PA location looks fine. A layer three forwarding looks okay as well. And clearly you see that security policy is causing um, Maria to be unable to access Outlook. So let's see what really happened here. So clicking on security policy, you come here and you're seeing that clearly there is a deny rule that is identified, right, for Maria. And what is also interesting is that, you know, on, on this uh, access analyzer piece, you're actually able to see uh, so much rich information about Maria's device, source address, PA location, destination address. We're able to see your traffic topology, um, information about HIP profile matches, user groups, and so on, right? Uh, layer three forwarding. So this is, uh, this is really an area where even help desk teams can help the end users promptly because a lot of our customers have complained about low ROI on help desk teams. Right. And if they're in this case, right, where you're seeing a security rule is stopping Maria from accessing Outlook, right, we have R back in place. So even if the help desk admin cannot uh, directly change uh, this particular match or policy, right, they can at least route it to the correct security uh, team to look at so that they can change the policy. So I'm just going to come up here. Um, but with this, I come to the end of the demo as well, where I shared um, certain key capabilities of AI ops, which include incident correlation uh, with root cause detection, sharing the impact of the incident as well. And I also spoke about our natural language query interface, which makes it really easy for 
our help desk admins, IT admins, or network operators to even troubleshoot single user issues with these enriched details. Thank you so much.